Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining um, the fourth Digital UK and Ireland FPNA board meeting. We will today be discussing the exciting um, subject of the art and science of XPNA business partnering. Uh, my name is Hans Gobin. Um, I am an international board um, member, ambassador, and your facilitator for today. Uh, we are today joined by more than 400 members um, from more than 29 countries, but most of whom are from the UK. I'm sure you will enjoy this insightful presentation we have planned for you. So what do we have in store for you today? So we will start by XPNA Business Partnering. What is it? XPNA business partnering and collaboration in legal and general um, investment management. XPNA business partnering, a case study. Softer skills for better XPNA business partnering. How can modern technology enhance and transform business partnering models? Conclusions and recommendations. And then we will have a Q&A session. What have we done so far in the UK um, in terms of meeting? Apologies. So we've had quite a few meetings. Um, as you can see, a lot more than that. We can't fit it in one page. Uh, this will be our fourth digital meeting. It is now a good time for me to introduce the members of the panel for today. So at this point, I'd like to ask the panelists to join me. Uh, put their webcam on and uh, um, come on their mic. Um, thank you. So our first member of the panel today is Mark Lloyd, uh, who is Senior Manager of Finance at Legal and General Investment Management, also a London FPNA board. Mark is an experienced finance leader with some 25 years of experience developing financial planning and analysis and business partnering teams with a demonstrated history working in financial services and transport sectors. Mark will today talk to us about collaboration in business partnering and within his organization. Mark, it's great to have you here today. It's great to be here, Hans. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Our, sec our second speaker for today will be Adam Salem. Uh, who is head of FPNA at Philip Morris International? Uh, Adam is a Geneva FPNA board member, which is where he joins us from today. Uh, he's also an experienced senior finance manager with some 15 years plus uh, FPNA um, product costing, consolidation, and reporting experience. He's also a seasoned program manager leading 10 plus projects using agile and waterfall methodologies. Uh, Adam will today share with us his transformation journey towards XPNA, especially talking about the skills required there. Adam, great to have you on board today, Adam. You're welcome. Pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, Howard Tunningcliffe will be our third member of the panel today. He's head of finance subscriptions at The Economist. We all know Economist and a London FPNA board member. Experienced leader with over 15 years tenure in improving company profitability and developing finance team. He has a keen interest on the softer skills, which is, of course, the subject that he, he will be talking to us about today. Howard, great to have you with us today. Yeah, it's great to be here as well. Thanks so much for that introduction, Hans. Thank you. Our final member of the panel today is Dane hural Becky. Uh, Regional Director, UK and Benelux at Gerox. Uh, over 20 years of experience in implementing planning and forecasting system. Uh, avid promoter of modern flexible planning systems uh, that can bring cross-departmental processes together. Uh, Stain will today share with us how technology can enhance business partnering and move the model to an XPNA model. Stain, great to have you with us today. Hi Hans. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to talk. Nice to be here. Brilliant. Thank, thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, wouldn't you agree that we've got a great panel here today uh, with 
a lot of exciting and insightful presentation for you. We're looking forward to their presentation. Um, I would like to ask you guys, members of the panelists, to switch your webcam off. I've got a few more slides of housekeeping, and then we will start our presentation. Thank you. Uh, just a quick reminder of projects and initiatives of uh, FPNA trend. Um, 27 cities, 16 countries, and four continents now. So 27 FPNA board um, we have. This one brings together London, but also Ireland. Uh, just a quick reminder also that we are now um, at the demand of our members looking at best practice workshops and FBNA consultancy as well. So what is the digital FBNA board? It's a 90 minutes webinar. There's four polling questions which we would like you to participate in. Uh, there is an interactive Q&A session. Um, via the chat box, you can start to ask questions as from now. Um, but of course, after each presentation, and if you can kindly direct it to one of the speakers, that would be great as well. You can also connect to our speakers directly um, via LinkedIn. The presentations are available in the handouts. Please download it. You will also receive a recording and copy of presentation within a day after the meeting. At the end of a meeting, there is a feedback session, so please help us with the feedback. Um, our technology sponsor for today is Jedox. Uh, everybody knows Jedox through modern corporate performance management, the smart platform for planning, reporting, and analytics. So, what is XPNA business partnering? Business partnering has moved uh, along quite a, a little bit. It's no longer just serving our business partners. You know, it's much more about collaboration between the business unit, between the partners, between finance. It's more about motivating, educating, challenging the status quo with our analytical knowledge and approach. How is it different? integrated so it is company-wide now we're talking cross organization cross business unit and more importantly technology with the help of technology which we will see in our presentations later on the xpna business partnering maturity model um, some of you might have seen this so um, the way we've defined it the fpna board have defined it is there's three state which is the basic developing and the leading and we've broken it into four key elements i will just highlight the leading stage at this point obviously because of time i think the key thing is business knowledge has to be strong and holistic um, organization wide internal and external factors we've got to understand uh, we need to have a good degree of influence be a trusted advisor act as a sounding board the soft skills is very very important confident in challenging ability to persuade effective communicator establish storyteller and finally analytics we've got to be using advanced bi models and tools driver based with the use of ai ml and prescriptive planning and power scenario management tools to be able to reach the last stage so let us move on and see the first set of presentation um, which will be talking about collaboration and xpna so our first presentation today is from mark lloyd who's senior finance manager at legal and general investment management. And Mark will be talking to us about XPNA business partnering, collaboration within his organization. Mark, over to you. The stage is yours when you're ready. Thank you for the introduction, Hans. Um, so as Hans says, I've um, had a background in FPNA and business partnering. Um, I'm, I'm currently actually in a role outside of business partnering um, and was was working on a number of challenges in that area. Um, and when we were discussing XPNA business partnering, um, it made me think about how I had taken some of the business partnering skills into my new team and enhanced what they were doing. 
So I'm going to share with you today some of my personal experiences in, in how I transferred those skills and also the impact it's had on the team and, and the way in which it works. So we go to the next slide. Um, as is normal for these presentations, we'll, we'll start with a, with a famous quote and well-known quote. Um, it was Benjamin Disraeli that said that change is inevitable and change is constant. I think that's relevant for today's presentations from the panel. Um, we're going to see how business partnering continues to evolve um, and really extend into the organisation um, and integrate in, integrate with the with the processes. So on the next slide, I'll just talk you through what I'm going to cover today. So um, I'm going to go back and give a quick overview of business partnering and FPA in LGM, um, and then I'm going to move on to my team specifically and talk around um, how I'm enhancing roles in in that area. And, and the benefit that extending business partnering has brought. So just to cover the overview first. So finance have been going through a finance transformation program for a couple of years now, um, and really building out the dedicated FP&A and business partnering functions. Um, in fact, our head of FP&A, Gavin Green, um, came to one of these sessions um, about 18 months ago and gave a really excellent presentation on the vision and the progress um, and I'm sure he'd be very pleased to come back and give an update on on where we are um, but we've been um, finance have been really keen to put themselves at the heart of the decision making process in the organization and make sure that we're generating real value um, we want to get away from those low value repetitive tasks and really give the BPs time to spend on that analysis and that advising and being out of the business uh, we've invested in data and data, uh, data tools. We've invested in new technology and tools um, to, to present the data, and we've invest, invested in specialist skills. Um, and, and really, it's about giving the, the business partners um, that more insight from analytics and, and data they can trust and share with the business. So just moving on to my team. The challenges for me um, have been slightly different. Um, I'm dealing with um, having taken on more of a a process driven team um, and I just want to focus specifically on the area that deal with um, our complex invoicing of, of some of our clients um, and there was a real need in this area to um, continue the high level of accuracy that we needed but given the complexity about the data we're using the arrangements um, and the calculations we needed to look about moving on and making sure that our processes and our controls remained robust um, and we needed to think about how we collaborate with the business on doing that. Um, it's been quite a manually intensive area, so um, we needed to think about how we started to look for opportunities and introduce automation into the area and really get thinking, people thinking about how to use technology um, and, and really just supporting the client process. So on my next slide, I'll cover some of the skills now that um, I think have been, been relevant from the business partnering toolkit to bring to the team. Um, so we're not talking here about turning in people into partners, we're talking about enhancing the team with, with having that more business culture in the team. Um, Howard, um, later on, will discuss some of the more softer skills around this area. So I'm just gonna focus on a couple that have been quite relevant and impactful for me. So given the complexity around what the team are doing, it was important to bring some commercial awareness to the team. Um, so they could understand, um, they could make some connection between what was going on in the business and activity and what they're actually calculating and, and, and reviewing. So um, it's quite difficult, I think, to teach commercial skills. Um, I think it's about mindset and I think it's about um, having that experience. Um, but we could certainly work the fundamentals to start that process off. So um, we, we did two things. Um, we, we got the team involved with the manufacturers of the product and the investment teams who talk through the activities, the strategies they were following. And so the team got a really good idea around the effort that was involved um, and the kind, the kind of things that we were doing for the customers. Um, and secondly, we got the team closer to the pricing process in the team. So they become much more familiar with the, with the rates and, and how these were derived. Um, and this really... Um, brought an end-to-end -end view for the, club, for, the, for the team. So the team could see the end-to-end -end of the products and it really, as I say, brought the numbers to life. Um, another area I wanna focus on is the technology and data. So um, we needed to change the mindset in the team to become more looking for technology and thinking about how we could use it. And we needed to see the what technology was available and different tools. And then we also need to think about how can we use it and how can we implement it? 
and what do we need to change in our processes to help that? So um, this was about really introducing the team to different areas of technology. So we went and had demonstrations from different parts of the business, looking at how they were using technology and how processes were broken down. Um, and we also um, we also started to spend more time um, having breakout sessions, looking at looking at the data that was coming from the business partnering teams in the report. So we could really understand how how the information we were providing was being used. And I think this again really has helped the team think about um, how they build process and how they can make it more automatable. Um, again, collaboration um, I think encompasses all of this. So working, thinking about how we work with the business more. So we don't just become around providing data and numbers, but actually it becomes a two-way relationship whereby we, we're learning from the business and providing information back. So if we go to the next slide. I'm just going to cover the impact that's had on, on the challenges. So from an automation perspective, um, the team now have a much better awareness of um, the tools available and how we can use those tools to change the process and also how the processes need to adapt. So there's a much more willingness to search for new opportunities and adopt new types of technology. We've um, we, we've changed the way that we consolidate data in the team and something, something simple like that has had a, a, really, a really profound impact in terms of the speed that we can get access to our own data and use it. Um, and they're looking and coming up with ideas all the time around different, different ways we can use. And they're also more comfortable talking to specialists in terms of how we implement this. And the complexity has been tackled really by um, the team building a better understanding of the products and what's going on. Um, they're much more confident in terms of talking to the business and getting information back. Um, and they're able to do a much more robust review on what they're doing. Um, and I think just being empowered to find out more means that it's a two-way two channel there. And with the increased confidence and understanding, collaborations increased. We, we're now um, working much more closely with, with the actual business that we're supplying the information to. Um, we're, we're, we're able to, to predict and be proactive in terms of advising them on things we need to, think, need to review. And, and something that I really like is we're able now to work much more closely with our business partnering team and um, give them information and insights into some of the data that we are providing into their, into their systems. So just on the final side to wrap up um, and give some takeaways, I think um, I think this is about, for me, about how do we increase the reach and influence of the finance department. Um, I think the point I'm trying to make is actually we can do this also outside of business partnering. We can take some of those skills and learnings and we can think about how we develop other staff with those skills. Um, and it really just improves the overall culture of business partnering. And I think for XPNA, um, it's important to remember it's an agent for change and we're there to promote best practice. So that brings my presentation to an end. So thank you for your time and I'll hand back to Hans. Mark, thank you very much for an excellent presentation and thank you for sharing um, how you are implementing FPNA business partnering within your own department and hence helping the organization on that journey towards XPNA business partnering model. Thank you very much for that. I would like to ask the other members of the panel to come and join me uh, in giving us some comments on the uh, Mark's presentation, please. So, Adam, if I may come to you first, please. Adam? Yeah. Yes, thanks, Hans. Look, uh, I was listening to, to your presentation, Mark, and I uh, find quite a few analogies with, with what we're doing, right? So, I mean, for, first of all, if you look at technology, right, and I think having the team uh, familiar with the latest tools and feeling comfortable for me is, is very important and uh, it's it's also a question of adoption not not only by by the business partner teams themselves but also by the customers because we, we always need to look from uh, the ultimate customer perspective and this is also what we're doing as part of our transformation so we kind of equip the business partner we gave them like we say ammunition to so then we're equipping them to talk to the to the final final customer that that we ultimately serve and as you say the other one exposure to the business also is is key to to build trust and 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 to have a common language with uh, with who we ultimately serve yeah. thank thank you very much adam um for your comments um howard can i come to yourself for some comments please howard yeah so it sounds like a lot of changes been going on there mark um a couple of things stood out to me i think firstly 
you talked about end-to-end -end storytelling to really build that engagement and and that's probably not a skill that we would have expected to be really important in finance um, maybe even a few years ago but that's really coming out now so it's great to hear how you managed to engage your team and then secondly upskilling a process driven team um, with these kind of softer skills you mentioned that it, it's pretty difficult and you started off with the fundamentals and i think that that's a really good approach you know typically with people skills soft skills we never really get taught them quite often we have to figure out them out ourselves so even just the fundamentals which might seem obvious to us as more senior practitioners um, can be really useful for developing more junior people in our teams Thank you very much, Howard. Uh, finally, Stain, over to you. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, very nice indeed. Uh, what really stood out to me is is uh, the sense of again upskilling and and letting people learn every single part of the business. I, I can find myself in there, having worked in oil and gas. Even though you come out of a finance uh, centered position, you know you, you start learning about exploration, etc. And and obviously that's something that is necessary. You you need that. Um, that motivation to do that, but it also obviously makes makes the job uh, very interesting as well. So uh, yeah, I can definitely find you in in the story that you were telling there. Thank you. Thank you, members of the panel. Uh, Mark, thank you for a, a great presentation. Now that we've heard from yourself, let's go to the uh, attendees and see um, you know how they feel and where they are on that maturity model. So let me switch to the polling question now. Um, I am just about to launch our first polling question, um, and I have just done. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you can vote, please. So, the first question is, where is your organization um, on that XPNA business partnering maturity model? Is it at that basic stage where um, there's quite a lot of limits? Is it at the developing stage where things are starting to change? Or is it at that leading stage that uh, we've just seen um, early on and, and I went through um, extensively? If you could vote, please, that would be very good. I'll give it another five seconds and then I will share um, the vote and the outcome. Right, I am now going to close the poll and I will share the outcome. So 20. 4% uh, are at the basic stage, 69% are at the developing stage, and 8% at the leading stage. Um, Mark, can I come to yourself for some comments on what we're seeing here? Mark, please. Yes, of course. Um, I'm actually quite surprised and pleased by that result. I think we've seen results before where um, there's more in the basic state. It's really good to see that people are in the developing state. Um, so clearly, clearly organisations are moving on, um, and I, I think I think it might also be that the the different components people may be at different stages of those components. So we might be finding now that there's more of those components now are moving into developing state at this stage, um, and and it's great to, it's great to see there's some leading state there. It'd be good to hear to hear from them. Thank thank you very much, Mark and Adam. Can I come to yourself for some comments, please? Sure. Look, I, I I I see that quite a lot of us are working and improving their processes, which is which is great. And uh, yeah, and I think we we all have ambitions in mind, and uh, we all know that we always can go further. Thank you, Adam. And and just resonating what we're seeing here is uh, you know seeing that 69% in developing stage plus the eight percent, which is. Uh, um 77 percent that's excellent a little bit more work to do on the 24th but uh, i'm pretty sure you know we will get there um and through education um absolutely um thank you very much uh panelists i will hide the uh, uh poll now and uh, uh we will now move on to uh our next session uh which is a case study and to deliver that to us today, we have uh, Adam Salem, who is Head of Planning, uh, Budgeting, Forecasting and Analysis at Philip Morris International. And uh, Adam, the floor is yours. Ready when you are, Adam? Yes, th thank you. Thank you very much. So first of all, pleasure being here. Uh, a little bit about uh, my current role. So since around two years, I'm, uh, uh, I'm accountable for, for, in fact, transforming our FPNA department globally so 
we are touching all levels of the organizations. We we work in markets, uh, regions, and, and and HQ, and this is where we 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 go through our transformation, right? Now today's presentations are about business partnering, and if you if you move to the next next slide, uh, I mean we all want to have more time for business partnering, right? But the the challenges that we're facing, which catalyze our transformation, was that we're all heavily involved in the current work. So there was always a budget to do. There was always some actual clothing, some reporting, etc. And and plus being a global company. Uh, we see that after analyzing, we could get a bigger economy of scale, right? We could do things in a more standardized way, use more technology, and that led us to our transformation program. And if you move to the next one, please, uh, we'll show you the, the pillars of that. So if, if you look at that, these are the components of both processes and technological changes that we're implementing. And we're saying in order to deliver business partnering processes, business partnering services to our customers, we need to take out the burden of process and repetitive work. And we need to equip our, uh, our organization with, with, with the most modern tools that we can. So how we did that? We started with uh, further harmonizing our data models. So here there was uh, already quite a lot of harmonization that we did on the corporate level. But uh, what we did, we, we, we are now putting a common dictionary of, of data, things like account, like cost centers, but also beyond finance, going through channels, customers. And we want to have a, a unique way to define it at any level of the organization. Now, the next building block that we put are the processes for managing costs. So we put here a central process also followed by the central team as part of integrated business services, which is now delivering all cost uh, controlling processes as a service. And it's all leveraged on one integrated tool. We are adding to that also the revenue forecasting and modeling. So it's, it's about having various scenarios of, of revenues, depending on price, depending on volume scenarios. And then together with cost, that gives us the, the entire P&L. Right? And then on top of that, we had balance sheet and cash flow. So thanks to this, we have a full process related services delivered from our integrated business services crew. On the right hand side, you also see the consolidation processes. So we are ensuring that they all end up under one, one process, one solution, uh, and that we do things in the same way in, in all locations we have. Now, having the foundation, what we are having and constantly enhancing is the integrated data layer. So here we, we have a, an integrated data warehouse where we put not only financial information, but also some consumer information, commercial information. So then we can connect the dots and perform more analytics uh, uh, reporting, but also beyond that, uh, providing more prescriptive and descriptive analytics to, to our customer which comes on the top. Here we, we deliver a set of standard and ad hoc solutions and uh, also reporting as, as a service. And if you look on the right hand side, what we're also doing in parallel is the integrated business planning, where we are engaging with supply chain and uh, commercial, and we're putting together all the planning processes uh, to ensure that they are managed more jointly for the company. Now, if you move to the next slide, now I, I showed you more the process and, 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 and tools transformation, but what we are transforming as well is our organization model. So if you look on the top, that was our original traditional way of working. So we had market region and uh, central functions, which were both delivering business partnering uh, services to our customers, but also running through processes. Now, thanks to the, uh, the technology and also to the automation and the new team that we introduced on the bottom, which is IBS, or Center of Expertise, we're taking out these repetitive processes from the, the ones above, and we are creating dedicated teams managing both costs, balance sheets, the whole PNL reporting analytics, and also running the data and, and, and governance uh, to the organization. And we see that has various advantages that helps us streamline and standardize the processes, 
leverage on the economy of scale and then the the biggest advantage i see is really taking out the burden of of, of our frontline which are business partners so we are literally freeing up their calendars we're making them more available we're making them there as co-pilots as we say with the business to to help to advise to run scenarios and uh, to be there when, when we're needed right and then we thanks to that we see that finance becomes more available finance becomes part of uh, of of the business right now if you move to the to the next one uh, the kind of last big component of, of this transformation is, is the approach and the skill set. Because here we are talking about adopting new faces. So as as business partners or as finance uh, professionals, we take the face of the entrepreneur. We are there to be with the business, to take calculated risks and to, to be there to, to, to manage all the investments jointly, right? We are the strategist as well, to connect the dots. We're linking all our projects, all our investment, also with the strategies of our company, and, and to ensure that we follow some steps that, that have been commonly agreed. We also act as a challenger. So we are here to defend the value of the company. So we are always challenging if the initiative driven by commercial or other departments is economically viable? Does it make sense? Does it lead us to the strategic direction that, that we have already set? We are the guide, and by, by that we, we are the partner, we are the storyteller. So we are guiding the business, uh, showing based on the data where, where we would go if we continue uh, acting as we act, and we can also advise where we can go to avoid some obstacles or, or to, to, to seek some opportunities. Now, last but not least is the expertise. I mean, we recognize that as finance, we need to uh, keep the expertise that we have. A lot of these expertise is now being concentrated also in our centers of expertise, where we have people specialize in certain processes and the expertise that they gain for a particular geography, they can also share it with others, but we also remain the expertise in the market where we are close to the business but we're also building new skills such as data sovereignness, such as machine learning, such as also using, uh, using modern technology. Now, and, and if we summarize, I mean, you see here the type of services that we, we continue delivering. We predict the change. We see where we're gonna go and what it would mean for the business. We are there to support our strategies. Uh, we are there to manage our investments, our projects, we ensure that we have right ROI. Uh, competitive intelligence was always at the heart of, of our work, and this is something we continue doing with support of teams and technology. Uh, in terms of planning, we don't only look at short term. This is also the long term horizon planning the next couple of years, where we're going to head in terms of uh, new products, new services, and, and, and finance. Finally, the business performance review, which is always at the heart of our of our functions. We're checking where we are leading, going as a business, where we end up. So I hope during this couple of minutes I managed to share with you our transformation. We'll be happy to answer your questions and also to follow up later on on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adam, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, sharing with us the transformation journey your organization has gone through uh, towards the XPNA model move um, and the challenges faced. I think uh, um, the final slide was really uh, uh, very interesting in terms of the skills as well as how you fit the strategies together. So thank you very much for that. I would like to invite the other members of the panel to uh, join us and give us some comments on uh, um, Adam's presentation, please. So, Mark, if I can start with yourself, Mark, please. Uh, thank you, Adam. I thought that was a really engaging presentation and I really felt like I was on the journey there. Um, and a couple of points for me. Um, I, I think the um, it was really good the way the pillars were, were shown. And I think it just shows the importance of getting that, that integrated data, uh, data layer right. Um, and what came across to me was the amount of work and effort gone into preparation of that. So, you talked about the data dictionaries. Um, and just secondly, quickly, I think um, 
just as well as as well as talking about skills of people it's also important to think about organizational structure as well and this gives you the opportunity to think about that and think about how you structure to support this so thank you thank you very much mark um howard can i come to yourself for some comments please yeah so adam i think you touched on a couple of areas which really highlight the challenges for us as we move into xpna um, for me i think the biggest problem that i see is getting dragged into these process low value add tasks that you mentioned so there's a lot of urgency around these um, and it seems as though with your uh, structure you've actually managed to solve some of those challenges but i think that's something we need to continually battle against um, and secondly looking here at the faces i think this is a great concept of the different faces that we need in xpna um, but just look at the variety that we've got here you know entrepreneur strategist challenger guide expert these aren't things that were probably being asked of xpna departments five, 10 years ago. So we really need to kind of challenge ourselves to keep up with these increased demands that we've been asked to fulfill. Thank you very much, Howard. Uh, and finally, st stay into yourself. Yep. Um, well, same thing, actually. I, I really like how, you know, like in, in Mark's presentation, the, the same thing comes out here where, you know, you have to increase the competencies. And, and indeed, I, I love the way you call it faces. It'll become a different person as well and and again it shows how how interesting the entire journey is uh, and and obviously i'll go a bit further on that with technology on the background so uh, yeah i love how that just repeats and uh, so it just um like confirms my ideas across it as well you know within this thank you thank you very thank you. much thank you very much uh, uh, panelists and adam thank you very much for a uh, uh, a very insightful presentation uh, can I ask you to switch your uh, webcam off whilst we uh, move to our um, polling question? Second polling question. Just um, a quick reminder to our um, uh, attendees that they can ask um, questions via the chat box. Please direct it to our presenters. Um, I am now launching polling question two um, to hear from yourself about what do you think are the skills um, that your organization need to develop to uh, go towards a better FPNA, XPNA business partnering model. Data skills, technology skills, business knowledge, or softer skills? Can you please vote? Um, is it data skills? Is it technology skills? Is it business knowledge? or is it softer skills? We'll give it um, another 10 seconds. So A, is it data skills? B, technology? C, business? And then finally, softer skills. Uh, I am now going to close the poll and I will now share the poll. 24% um, um, have said um, data skills, 36% technology, 24% business knowledge and 17% softer skills. Uh, Adam, can I come to yourself and ask for uh, your comment on what we're seeing here, Adam, please? Yeah, I, I guess it was quite difficult to choose, right? Because uh, I mean, all of them are the ones where, you know, you we, we put some investment, but uh, I agree, like technology is what has been evolving quite rapidly lastly, and we all want to catch up and to, to, to be there. So I think I, I'm, I'm not surprised with, uh, with with the answer. Thank you very much, um, Adam. Howard, can I come to yourself for some comments, please? Yeah, so fairly even spread here. Um, my next presentation is going to be about softer skills. So um, obviously that's come in fourth place here. But my argument would be that we can't really do any of the other things without the softer skills. So we're increasingly working in matrix environments. So if we want to improve our technological skills, if we want to deliver those big projects that are going to make a difference for us in technology terms, we need to really come together and work as a team to do them. So I'm hopeful if we uh, redid this poll after my next presentation that that softer skills might just be an, a, a percent or two higher. Um, I, I do believe it's really important. Howard, thank you very much for that. And, and uh, Adam, thank you very much. You know, ab ab absolutely. I think uh, we are seeing more or less an equal split, but, uh, um, you know, technological skills is higher on the agenda here for some reason. I think people are still going through that journey, which is why. 
But as you mentioned there, Howard, uh, softer skill is becoming more and more important. I will now um, hide the uh, poll and uh, we will move on to the next part of our presentation. So um, talking to us about softer skills, as uh, Howard already mentioned early on, um, is Howard Tunningcliffe, Head of Finance Subscription at The Economist. And again, uh, he'll be talking to us about how do you use that softer skills to get to that XPNA business partnering. So Howard, over to you whenever you're ready. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, Hans. And wonderful to see so many of you here today. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about softer skills. Um, I, I really believe that it's an area of our biggest opportunity uh, when we look at the demands that are being placed on our time um, and, and the additional skills that we're being asked to bring to the table, as Adam just mentioned. So by day, I'm head of finance subscriptions at The Economist, as you can see here. Um, my side hustle, more focused around um, soft skills, coaching and workshops. And um, going back some years, I really um, took some time out to decide what were what was going to be the, the things that were going to impact my career most positively. Uh, where could I invest my time effectively? And the answer that I came to was soft skills. So yeah, let's go to the next slide. So my um, quote here from a very presidential looking Abraham Lincoln, he's saying, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the ax. And as Adam mentioned in the last presentation, it's very easy for us to get dragged down into that urgent process, non-value ad work, even as more senior finance professionals. So today I'm going to make an appeal to you to take some time out of your day job, get off that hamster wheel that we're always on, um, take a little bit of a step back and then try to plan out your career. So how can you develop the skills that you're going to need in the short term and also more in the medium term as well? So on the next slide, you'll be able to see a nice word cloud of what soft skills can mean. So again, part of the challenge with soft skills is, is really nailing it down. Um, my feeling is that really communication is the heart of it. So it's all aspects of communication, which is an incredibly broad area. And you can see here some of the topics we've already touched upon. Um, so things like influencing, um, leadership, networking, listening is obviously key. Um, and storytelling becoming an increasingly important part of the picture, as Mark mentioned in his presentation. I um, also believe we've got some uh, coming up in May. I think there's some FP&A um, board events which are really based around storytelling. So clearly it's becoming more of an important skill for us in finance. All right, so on the next slide, I've looked at a couple of surveys that have been done in early 2021. So there's a PwC survey and also a Forbes survey. And they've gone out to CFOs and asked what what are the current problems? I'm going to go through these uh, one at a time, and then I'm going to see, uh, tell you how I believe they relate to soft skills. And then I'll also tell you about the potential pitfalls we might face if, if ourselves and our teams aren't able to deliver on those soft skills. So the first one, uh, missed opportunities to return to growth. So at The Economist, we've um, fortunately um, been quite positively impacted um, by COVID, people with more time to read. Um, but also we have an event side of the business and advertising so and um, we've taken a little bit of a hit there um, so really every company will be looking to um, ramp back up as we come out of lockdown and the soft skills that we need here are really um, the confidence to ask questions and, and also active listening so quite often i'm sure in your previous career and, and with your teams now quite often in xpna we can be um, one of the more junior people in the conversation. It's not uncommon for an analyst to be in a meeting um, with directors and talking about being that challenger, um, the change agent, that we really need to empower our teams to be able to deliver um, in these quite difficult situations. Um, and if they can't do that, if they don't have those soft skills, they're not going to be able to hoover up um, all of that great knowledge and report it back to you. And we're gonna miss some of those opportunities. Um, agile processes, I'm sure this has been a headache for pretty much everyone on the call. I know at The Economist we've done uh, probably four or five submitted budgets over the last 14 months. And, and the soft skills we're looking for here are 
are really getting away from being that kind of typical stereotypical accountant just kind of sits in the corner and follows their process. We really want to bring out of creativity and adaptability. And if we do that, again, it's going to free up some of our time. It's going to take away that process time that people don't really get much um, out of. It's going to free up our time for some more of the value add, which is where, where we want to be. Uh, so not being fit for a digitally focused future, plenty of companies struggle um, against digitally native challenges. For sure, this, this is a topic for pretty much every business. Um, at the moment at The Economist, we're going through a big digital transformation project with, and it's not actually being led by finance, quite often they won't be. It's really um, customer teams and operational teams that are leading this. So massive project for us. Uh, the skills that we need here are really um, influencing in a matrix environment and also the communication. Um, what we're trying to avoid here is any nasty surprises. Um, and also what we're trying to do as, as a, a co-pilot here rather than a leader, we're making sure that as a finance function, we've got what we need to be able to um, manage uh, and get the data that we need to manage the business through this changing time. Um, diversity and inclusion is a huge topic across the globe, um, quite rightfully so. And the key skills here are sort of empathy and again, active listening. So getting to know people from different cultures and backgrounds, kind of appreciating them and being curious. If our teams can't foster this, we're not going to get the best out of our people. Um, and we're also going to be potentially subject to some group think. We're not going to take all of those good competing points of view and, and taking the best out of it. Um, the final one here, so lack of motivation and churn within your team. And this is really about storytelling. Again, that sort of end to end view. So showing our teams how their small part of the puzzle feeds into the, the bigger picture. Um, also coaching and development is being demanded of us by our teams. It's not just about management anymore. And if we can't deliver on those things, then our best people are going to leave. And, and that's going to really seriously impact the ability of our team to deliver. OK, so on the next slide, um, this one's key. So hopefully I've convinced you that softer skills are, are an area of great importance for you. And the next question is logically, well, what can I do about it? So the first step take some time out to do an awareness audit. So think about the skills that you and your team are going to need for success in, in the shorter term. You'll probably come up with quite a long list um, because there are all of these demands being placed on us. So it's really important here to then fine tune it down to just the, the one or two top priorities. You can't be spreading yourself too thin on that. So come away with just some, some key areas to work on. And then next, it's all about sharpening your own axe. So some good ways to upskill yourself on these softer skills are um, lots of um, articles out there on the internet. You can start to understand more about each area of soft skill. Um, and another great way of upskilling is by finding someone that's good at something. So if you know someone that's a good influencer, you can observe them, talk to them and really get their feedback. Um, the next thing is really about kind of passing the sharp note to your team. So identify the areas that you want them to work on, but it's really important here to have a collaborative approach. So it's not just about telling them, this is what I want you to work on. You need to be the salesperson. You need to be the storyteller, convince them why it will be useful for them. And, and if we can do that correctly, this is really gonna help them fly kind of later on in their careers. Um, some other things that we can do around passing the sharpener are talk to your internal training teams. Um, there aren't, um, in my experience, that many soft skills courses, and I, I really believe there will be in the future. So ask for what you want, see if they can develop something for you. Um, there may be an opportunity for some external uh, workshops and external coaching. Um, and that's an area that I'm kind of starting to develop because we've seen that there is a, a need for these um, type of skills. So um, as Hans mentioned at the top, please do connect with um, myself and all of the other panelists on LinkedIn um, after the presentation. Also get your questions in. Um, the final part here is just a continuous feedback loop. So make it a part of your annual review cycle. You know, go and ask people, how are you doing? Um, and then really the cycle starts again. So we're, we're back to the awareness audit. So you've upskilled in one area, nice job. Um, leveled up there and then there's always more to do. So great, 
thanks for your time and it's, it's back over to hands. Howard, thank you very much for uh, uh, your insight, especially on the softer skills. I mean, whatever survey we look at, normally you find that softer skills comes in at uh, number one um, and the importance um, for XPNA business partnering. Um, that, that is a, um, a great set of tools in, in how you've shared with us, you've uh, implemented and you carry on implementing in the economy. So thank you very much for that. I would like to ask uh, the other member of the uh, panel to come and join us and give us uh, their insight into uh, the softer skills and uh, Howard's presentation, please. So Mark, if I may um, start by yourself. Thanks, Howard. I really enjoyed that. Um, I think it's clearly a passion of yours, um, and I think it's um, it was interesting it come forth in the poll. And I think Adam is right that um, it's not that it's not important or not. It's just that there's other competing factors, and I think that's what we need to remember. Is this the one that falls off the table first when um, there's other skills to be to be gained? And I think moving into XPNA business partnering, I think it gives us some real opportunities to actually um, to, to for our teams to help them identify where situations can be improved with softer skills. So. Thanks, Howard. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, Adam, can I come to you next, please? Uh, look, I, I think um, if you look at the skills of the of the future uh, for business partners as part of FPNA, I mean, I think we have quite a few of them as part of our current work, but there is quite a few that we need to develop, and they they come on on top of what was usually done using finance like 10 15 years ago right and then and, and this is where we see all we are all filling this gap and we're filling it by exposing to other work but it's it's also about diversity it's also about being more open to to bringing people from other departments and 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 doing this journey together as well as helping the employees to develop helping acquire new skills and there is a lot of uh, a lot of them that want, want to do that, and I think our 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 role here is to guide and, and to enable that. Adam, thank you very much for that. Uh, um, and finally, uh, can we go to you, Stain, please? Yes. Well, Howard, uh, I'd, I'd happily give you another five percent on the poll because I I do completely agree. Um, you know, in the end, we're all talking about change and and every change and transformation, and every bit of change and transformation has you know gives different reactions. And uh, and it's definitely those soft skills, and I'd say especially you know the listening and the coaching people into this change is is hugely important, especially if, you know with technology. You know if you don't have that, you're uh, going straight for a fail. So so it is very very important. Fully agree. Members of the panel, thank you very much for your comments, and and Howard, thank you very much for uh, sharing the insight on softer skill with us. Uh, let us now um, go to the polling question and ask our attendees um, what uh, do they think on the next poll? If you bear with me, I will just open the poll. So where would you say your organization is on that um, XPNA or integrated FPNA business partnering journey? Um, are you Yes, we run an integrated FPNA business partnering model. Um, we do plan to implement such a structure in the near future. No plans for an integrated FPNA business partnering model. Um, so, first one is yes, we run an integrated FPNA business partnering. Second one, we do plan, but we don't do it at the moment. And third one, there is no plan for such a business model in the future. Uh, we'll give it a few more seconds and then we will close the poll. Um, please vote. And also remind you that you can carry on asking questions uh, via the chat box. I'm now going to close it and share it. So 36% have said yes, we run an integrated FPNA business partnering model. 50% said uh, we do not have the moment, but we have plans for the future. And 14% have no plans. Can I ask uh, Howard to give us some comment on the outcome here, Howard? Yeah, I think it's really encouraging. I think that the, the more um, of these polls I see, they, they all seem to be trending in the right direction. So, yeah, I think there will always be an element of companies that aren't quite looking at it yet, but that, that's pretty low. Um, and yeah, great to see over a third 
um, do. And, and clearly, people have got the memo, and you know they see the value of, of implementing this structure. Thank, thank you very much, Howard. And, and Stain, what will your comments be uh, looking at this polling uh, outcome? Well, uh, I mean, from a, from a vendor perspective, I'm obviously uh, very happy to see that there's 50% uh, planning uh, such things in, in the future. Uh, but I'd, I'd definitely like to go to the people who have no plans. Uh, I, I think, you know, I don't know why you're not planning. Maybe it's a part of fear or cost or anything. But uh, I think it's it's very important to, to think of it because it is a way to also give your own business an edge uh, to the competition. So uh, obviously very happy to see the, the results in the first two. But I would encourage the people in the, in the last one to uh, to have a look at it anyway. Thank you very much, Dave, and thank you very much, Howard. And then I'll, I'll resonate uh, uh, exactly what both of you guys have said. If you look at 64% have not um, uh, yet implemented, I think uh, there, there should be a, a big push because you don't want to be left behind, um, whereas you know 36% have already gone on that bandwagon. So uh, uh, absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, both. I'm going to now hide it and uh, we will move on with uh, our presentation and, and finally what we'll be talking about now is how we can use technology to leverage uh, and provide us that best or art and science of xpna business partnering and to talk to us uh, today about that we have stain who's regional director uk benelux at jedox uh, stain the floor is yours ready when you are Thank you, Hans. Uh, welcome to everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, so indeed, yeah, currently regional director for UK Benelux at Jedox, but I'll also be talking a bit about uh, some experiences I had as as, a, as an FBA or XPNA systems implementer. So, um, um, but I'd like to start with a, a quote uh, of a much less well-known uh, person to you all, but a very important person to myself, my father. And, uh, and and he really, he always said that the job isn't easy until you have the right tool. Uh, and my father was a, was an electrician uh, in industrial electricity. So not, not small things, but big, you know, custom installations. And so many, many times he would tinker away for a couple of days uh, just to build the right tool to be able to do the job. So, you know, this, this much like, like um, um, Lincoln's, um, Abraham Lincoln's uh, quote, you know, you got to focus on something next to the day-to-day -day job to, or away from the initial, the, the final goal to actually get to your goal. And, and that's definitely valid uh, within, within a business partner in initiative. Now, obviously, uh, time is needed for this. And if we look at some research that uh, Larissa and the team has, uh, has shared with us uh, kindly, is that indeed just just that time seems to be what's not available um, and here we can see that a recent research shows that really only 25 percent uh, is used for this value added activities and um, and in a way you know I'm, I'm a little surprised it's already that much i think five years ago it would have been a, a lot less than that even but the ultimate goal is really uh, to to flip it around uh, and and be able to do at least 75 percent of value added work. So um, so how can we now use technology in this transformation in this business partnering transformation? Um, and so I'd like to just summarize um, the the steps in there. And and these are really a, a way of technology uh, interpretation of what Hans uh, explained the three different states. So we always say you know think big obviously don't lose the big picture start small uh, and then scale very quickly so going from the, the initial state of automating a, a few of these uh, tasks day-to-day -day tasks to indeed collaborating and then transforming and uh, I'll, I'll go uh, each and every step so let's go to the first step and I'll talk a bit more about this um, obviously each step has has a, techno a technological or a technical benefit and you know you can read those there indeed they are part of the solution very important but it, it's really the behavioral aspect uh, of people around there uh, the change from a really protective to, to receptive uh, uh, attitude and I have a, a small example of, of uh, what I had in, in one of my previous roles where 
you know, you come with this vision and, and the very first reaction is indeed we've got no time. I'm, I'm sure many of you have, have seen the, uh, the cartoon with a few people pushing a, a cart with square wheels uh, and a person with a round wheel standing behind them and they say, oh, we have no time. And definitely, you know, initially you will, you will get into this situation. And, and the, other, the other reaction is also one of you know, protection, fear even. So even though we're saying, okay, we're going to take away um, you know, these day-to-day -day repetitive jobs, there, there is a fear. People build their the, the confidence within there. So, and this is again where, where, where Howard's soft skills, uh, he's so keen you know, on and me too, really. This is where they come in. You know, this is where you need to lead people out of that comfort zone and show that they're not going to lose control, but on the contrary, actually gain control and uh, and and more time, obviously, to, <clears throat> excuse me, to do to do more value-added things. And you know, in this particular case, with with this ex-colleague of mine, he really grew from from a scared person, let's say, to you know, very confident and an avid promoter as well from from the new solution. Um, and then this naturally then follows into the next step. Now. Now we have time um, available, have more control. Now there is really time to start these business partnering initiatives. And really, you know, these people can now start to spread their arms out, their arms out into you know, different functions, different businesses uh, within the enterprise. And again, obviously, technically, you know, it means integrated drivers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the real thing again i find is that you know the change of attitude of you know the silo the, that's what i do and i don't care about the rest to really you know looking around what's happening and collaborating to finding that um that better solution which which is again something that mark uh, definitely experienced in in his uh, story so and and another example here of an experience i had was was one um of of a um, uh, an order management team where again, this person was just overwhelmed uh, with with really boring stuff, and and uh, you know he, he was fed up, and just by you know doing the first step, he grew into an open person and and really reached out to both finance and and the production team to work and collaborate on a solution, and so what technology did here was you know what was initially thought of this is super complicated with different approval stages, et cetera, et cetera. So technology just allowed it to work together and really simplify that process. Uh, and, and obviously, again, people knew what was going on between the different functions. Uh, and again, so the value is not the technology, but what comes out of it. And, and very naturally, then you progress to, to the next stage. So now we have this efficient, efficient, sorry, this efficient solution that has its arms spread across the entire organization. Now we can start augmenting it. So in the, in the next step, we really look at, again, uh, the technology of you know, uh, AI, uh, machine learning, automating forecasts, et cetera. Um, but here is, is where we can get from this reactive state of you know, something happens, what we're gonna do about it, to being proactive. Uh, I, I like comparing that to an investment. So, you know, if we buy an investment, I, I would hope at least that you have an exit plan. You know, if it goes down, what you're going to do? If it goes up, what are you going to do? So you've prepared that. And this is where we want to come to and be able to do that very quickly within our business with all the parts involved. So not just finance, but absolutely everything involved. Uh, and this is this stage that we work on. And uh, And obviously, you know, whatever you can model then or think of that's going to come your way, you can model that very quickly. And even even if something, you know, life throws a pandemic at you, you know, you can immediately, so not not weeks or days, but, all, you know, just within a couple of hours, you can see the impact of what's happening and, and also model the, the actions to mitigate the negative uh, impact of this. And, you know, at the end of the day, you, you still go home and have dinner with your family. So um, that, that, I think, is, is the main value. So really to, to recap is, you know, obviously, like my father said, the right tool is technology is very important. Absolutely. But it's and I see that maybe, you know, what we saw in the poll, people don't do it. Maybe there's that fear that technology is the target. It, it really isn't. It's, it's uh, an, an enabler to get to a much bigger value. Uh, which is a complete change of, of uh, you know, 
feeling confident within within the situation well, well within the business obviously but also the business within the world so and hopefully i made that clear and with that back to you hans Stay. thank you very much thank you for sharing uh, the importance of technology but also other factors uh, on this journey i think uh, it's it's imperative that you have the right tools so you can indeed change those stats that you shared uh, from fpna trends earlier on uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I would like to ask the other panelists to join us and uh, give us some comments, please. So, Mark, if we may start by yourself. Mark? Well, I think your father might just be a little bit more famous off the back of that. And I think I felt <laughs> virtual nodding of that quote. So, um, yeah, very good. Um, I think I think the think big, start small is um, resonates with me. I think um, I don't think sometimes it's a problem with thinking big. But we quite quickly get into then thinking about the problems getting there and what might happen. Um, and I think starting small um, is good for lots of reasons because, as you said, it, it helps one get people used to what technology is and, and going through that process of changing it. Um, what we don't want to do is do that and then find people build other processes around the site because they don't trust it. So I think starting small is good and it builds confidence um, and, and you learn from that. So um, it's good. And I, th I think. Um, about skill sets and buying the right tool is it's working out whether you need to develop that skill yourself or whether actually you need to actually go to a specialist to help and bring that in so um, lots of good good things I think to think about in that journey. Thank you very much Mark. Adam can we come to yourself please Adam? Yes look I mean in terms of also thinking being starting small I mean there is, there is one element here that we we continuously do, which is experimentation and then as part of design thinking, right? Especially in, in the planning area, you wanna you wanna first try on a small scale, right? And then you do you do experiments, you 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 do prototypes, you check how that works, and then, then you can you can scale it up. And and I think here, of course, having the right tools that enable you are important. So you can, you know, have small prototypes and then if you see they are working. Then you know you, you expand them and 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 of course you need to ideally make it part of of your whole infrastructure, right? After you tested it, you add components and and, and you grow as 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 you go. I would say. Thank you very much for that, Adam. And finally, Howard, can we come to yourself, please, for some comments? Yeah, I think you uh, really helped to confirm a lot of the um, other topics that we've talked about already today. So particularly change. Um, but also that kind of overwhelm and not having time um, that really came through. So I, I think you did a really good job of explaining how technology can really empower people and take them from um, even even a mindset change, you know, from I just do my job because this is what I've been told to do. And then actually then getting out of that bunker and being more collaborative. Everyone's going to get more job satisfaction out of behaving that way. So it's great to see that technology can enable that. Mm. Members of the uh, panel, thank you very much for uh, um, your comments there, and uh, thank you very much, Stain, for your presentation. Um, now that we've heard um, on technology from yourself, Stain, I think it, it'll be good time to um, go and see um, what the attendees can tell us about um, how they're using predictive planning uh, as one of the tools in their XPNA journey. So I'm just about to launch the uh, last poll. Um, for the day. So if you can vote, please. Um, does your organization use predictive planning tools, um, of course, in that XPNA sort of journey, or at least uh, in, in, in the uh, technology journey? Yes, it does, and it provides efficiency advantages and new insights. Uh, yes, we will be implementing in short term, but we don't at the moment. It is part of our longer term strategy, so not at the moment. And finally, no, we do not have any plans of implementing anything to do with predictive planning tools. If you can vote, please, I'll give it another 10 seconds. So, uh, yes, we do. Um, we will be implementing shortly, number two. Number three is part of our longer strategy. And number four, no, we're not uh, implementing it, have no plans for it. Uh, I'm now going to close the uh, polling um, and I'm going to share um, the results. So 12% have said yes, it provides efficiency and advantages and they are currently doing it. 
9% say it's a short term, 48% uh, it's a longer term strategy and 31% um, no, uh, we do not plan for implementation. Uh, Stain, can I come to you and ask for some comment on this, please? Uh, yeah. Um, well, yeah. It, it honestly it doesn't surprise me, obviously, because um, you know, almost daily we we see you know, how can we use this. I think there's still a lot of questions on, of how AI can be used, especially you know, then in the financial world, because you know, where numbers traceability, and then you're going to put this in a in a black box, and it's going to spit out some numbers, and we have to accept this. So, so our task is there to really show. Uh, it is there to augment, so not to take over the job, but to augment your job and help you and, and add some guide, guidelines towards your job, you know, where within uh, where you can do the job. So, um, yeah, absolutely not surprised. Uh, and, and we're working on answering the, the questions that come with it. So, Thank you very much, Stain. And, and Howard, can I come to you for some comments, please? Yeah, I think Stain's really the uh, the, the master here so um yeah i think he summed it up really well um again it's clearly an area where there is some value to be had um and probably an area where we we should be taking a step back and doing some more planning here to free ourselves up um, from those process tasks further down the line absolutely thank thank you very much both uh, absolutely there's a lot of opportunity here i think we really need to start looking at this and and look at how we can use uh, predictive planning, uh, you know, to take the business to the next level. Of course, you know, um, the sort of stats that uh, Stain shared early on, we have to uh, be able to reduce those. And, and this is one of the uh, uh, great way of doing this. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to now hide this and then we move on to our next session, um, which is the key takeaway. So I would like to invite the uh, panelists to join us. Um, and share with us their key takeaway um, of this XPNA business partnering session. Uh, Mark, if I may start by yourself. Thanks, Hans. Um, I think my key takeaway um, from my presentation, and also what I've heard today, um, is that um, collaboration, um, the benefits of collaboration aren't always seen immediately, and I think it can sometimes be hard work to start with. So. Um, I think we need to help people with that, and we need to um, we need to show them and help them get into collaboration. Because once 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 they are collaborating, the benefits are obvious, um, and they're working together. So it's it's kind of how do we get people to that stage? Um, and I think um, business partners are, are in an excellent position to share those skills to help that. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, Adam, can I come to yourself, please? So, what will be your key takeaway from this session? Yes. For me, is 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 a confirmation that we're all quite aligned on the direction we are taking, right? Of course, each of us does it a bit in a different way, uh, but uh, but yeah, I see a lot of commonalities, and and for me, it's also a great occasion to to share experiences, and and also not only during this session but also after. So I'll be very happy to to have follow up to. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, Howard, what will be your key takeaway from this session? Yeah, so key takeaway, very simple from me, soft skills is where the majority of your opportunity lies. So carve out some time from your day to day to upskill yourself for the benefit of your future self. Thank you very much, Howard. Um, Stain, can I come to yourself? Yeah, um, well, yeah, I think it, I hope we showed that, that business partnering uh, in general is, is definitely worth it because, uh, you know, it's shown many times it, it's really expanding uh functionality knowledge within your business and and as we say you know start small nothing to be scared about it, it can be taken in small easy steps but you you will quickly get to something with value thank you stain and and thank you all i think uh you know you've you've summed it very very well um and obviously the four presentations we've seen have shown different aspects but I think it's generally, you know, it's it's got to be a mix of, of everything. So uh, this brings us nicely to our next session, which is our uh, um, Q&A session. Bear with me, yes. Um, so our first question is to Mark. And uh, 
Mark, how long did it take for you to implement the XPNA or the business partnering element uh, within your organization? And what did you find was the biggest challenge for you? So um, I think it's just made clear. So the XP now I talked about was in my um, specific team. So it was more about um, working with a smaller number of people to develop those skills. So um, and I find um, I think initially it's um, it's about awareness and building that awareness and the fundamentals. I think once people have got the, that awareness of the skills and they're using them, um, one thing I find is you can start to bring them into the daily conversations and review so they understand that they are actually using those skills. And I think it builds from there, but um, I, I think it uh, I think it comes from from really building those fundamentals. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much for that, um, Adam. The next question is to you and um, how do you go about choosing the tools that have that has helped you automate the manual processes? What are the most important features of a good tool generally? Yeah, look, if we think of well, and, and we have here different uh, kind of classes and capabilities of the tools, right? So what what we are looking at is not only kind of the excellence within the domain but also the ability to integrate right because if uh, if we look at fpna i mean we're, we're having all the three major financial statements but we're also talking about connecting to various other other information right so we wanted to have uh, a tool which operates well within its domain but also is able to integrate which uh, is also performant enough to work with a large-scale organization as we are and uh, a tool which is which is scalable so that that that, that was the thing that, that we looked at thank thank you very much adam thank you very much for that and uh, our next question is to howard uh, howard of course thank you for sharing with us the uh, the softer skills uh, the key question is how do you manage uh, to ensure the softer skill development is on track. Is there some sort of a KPI that you can use or any sort of managing system that you can use to track it? Not really that I'm aware of. Um, I mean, my personal approach is is more of a kind of project plan, if you like, as I mentioned. Um, for yourself, if you've got some written objectives, you can kind of ask people for feedback how you're progressing against those and you can rate yourself against them. Um, also with your team can be part of um, development plans and part of the um, kind of annual performance review. So I, I don't necessarily think that we need tools to manage this. Um, it, it's quite difficult to manage subjective things, I, I would say. Um, but I think if you've got a written commitment that you check in on, then that's actually good enough. And the most important side is the practical side. So don't worry too much about the um, pen and paper approach. Um, you need to kind of get into some practical exercises as soon as you can. I think you right, rightly mentioned there, uh, Howard, and, and thank you very much for that insight. It's, it's that continuous feedback loop uh, is, is the key way of managing it all, isn't it? Objective setting and then, you know, how we're doing against that, uh, those sort of objectives. So thank you very much for that. Um, the uh, next question is to uh, Stain. And Stain, um, how can XPNA Connected Planning Strategy help respond more rapidly to drastically changing environment, economic situation, for example, as we've seen over the last year? I think you made some sort of mention there, but can you please elaborate? Um, yeah, so uh, obviously, well, how how do you prepare prepare for things? Uh, it's it's really by modeling uh, what's going to come to you. So so translating, let's say, uh, an economic impact into some numbers, because in the end, that's how we always measure our business. Um, and I think this this is exactly what a good flexible tool can do. Uh, allow you to model absolutely anything you want uh, and show the impact on that not just on your financials but on your sales planning etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and, and on top of that is obviously what you need for that and it's going a bit to what adam was saying you know xpna partnering is is 
is basically a glue of, of all the different parts in the enterprise and and your tool needs to be the same the integration uh, as long as it integrates well you can actually do this modeling so the, it's a technological glue let's say uh, and, and that's how it really helps um, with with seeing the impact of these things thank you very much Tain. Um I've got a last question, which is directed to all of the panels, and, and I will go around the house again and, uh, uh, you know, in the same sort of order, if you don't mind. Uh, what to you would be the, the two or three steps to implementing an XPNA business partnering uh, within your organization, all important to you? What will be the three steps, do you think, um, to take? So, Mark, can I come to you first, Mark? Thanks, Hans. Um... I think as we talked about today um, in a number of presentations, um, having the right the right skill sets um, um, and whether that's partnering or whether it's being in special skills, make sure that you've got the right team assembled. Um, I think I think we're all going to agree that data is very important um, and harnessing data. We talked about data dictionaries earlier. Um, we talked about integrated data layers. So um, working out working out what you're going to do with your data, where you're going to store it, how you're going to use it. Um, and I think about, um, and, and certainly around how then we're going to um, display the information. So working out those the tools to, to kind of spread the information and, and do the analytics. So the dashboards. Um, and I think um, I think the journey is different for everybody, but it's um, it's working through that maturity model in terms of the components. And I suppose different different organisations are going to be at different places on that at different times. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much, Mark. And, 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 and of course, it, it is a uh, um, different organization, as you mentioned, uh, is on different path. And I think the key thing for them to establish is, you know, where does the priority lie and, you know, what are the big wins uh, with the smallest amount of time? And of course, it's all um, about resources at the end of the day. So that's very important as well. Um, so thank you, Mark. Uh, Adam, can I come to yourself? What would you say would be your sort of three key steps or key things to do? Uh, look, I think business partnering is a mindset, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the way how we operate. I mean, of course, skills are very important. Is is how do we listen to the customer? How do we empathize? How do we serve? And how do we help the customer together makes make some decisions right and, and and in order to do that you need to be equipped you need to be equipped with uh, with some tools with technology as we said we need to have time so we need to also have a process behind that takes out the things that that you were you're doing before and and maybe structure them a bit differently and 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 you need to constantly learn right so you need to extend your skills you need to extend your horizons so then you you follow your customer you understand better Thank you very much, Adam. Um, Howard, can I ask you the same question, please, Howard? So what will be your three key things to do and how will you do it? Yeah, I think number one would be kind of selling the vision. So you've got a group of disparate people here and kind of getting them all together and saying that this is what we're going to do and this is why we're going to do it. So that end to end view that we talked about earlier on. I think secondly, identifying the skills gaps. So um, what don't we have in our team that we need to and, and how can we make that better and then thirdly i think it's really about bringing people together so we can't have that siloed mentality anymore we need to be much more collaborative and actually physically bringing people together um, and getting them to understand each other and um, that kind of empathy and listening skills that we talked about earlier on is going to be key to um, implementing that xpna structure and, and how would we, of course, you talked about softer skills um, and where does that fit in the scheme of things in, in, in that, you know, where does it come? Does it come first, second, third or, or how would you put it? Well, I'm probably a bit biased. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably put it first. But I think for me, I mean, it is important. You know, if we look at um, a big technology project, the success or failure of that project is likely not down to the actual technology it's likely down to the implementation and the communication of all the teams involved so yeah again to repeat myself um i think soft skills are so under taught 
uh, and actually if we cannot skill people in those areas then there's just benefits all across the piece for us thank you very much howard and and finally staying uh, same question you know your three key steps what would you do even though your presentation was about three key things anyway so uh mm -hmm. what would be your um well yeah you know repeating a bit what's been said but absolutely the, the strategic vision and the support by the right people uh, within the business uh, for sure uh, because of all the challenges you will face um a second one i think would be you know manage expectations uh or, you know somebody needs to manage these um because it is a journey with with ups and downs uh it's it's not uh you know it's done in three months and that's it uh, so and and i guess this is where it you know i don't know if it's a third point it's it's almost the same as the second but you know it's uh, business partnering obviously talking about technology implementing a technology you know doesn't have to take years but you know the change in mindset uh could could be a journey that takes uh that takes a year or even a few years so uh and i think so being patient is is another one and, and keeping focus on that strategic vision and and uh, again stain thank you for that and and where does technology then sit obviously you are probably a little bit biased but uh, given your technology background but i know your finance background and everything else so uh, uh, where do you think technology sits in, in the scheme of things then well it, uh, it's an enabler obviously so you can't do a job without the right tools you know here here i am uh, repeating my father again but um, so it, it is really important, but it cannot be the only thing. And I think this is this is where uh, many times it goes a bit wrong, where they let technology dictate what you're going to do, and it really you really need to stick to the other side. And, and this is why why the flexibility of technology is so important. You need to be able. So the functional part is is much more important in that sense. But you need to decide, and obviously. Uh, even people like yourself, Hans, you know, there is advisory out there, uh, people that can give you advice on how to do this. Uh, and, and technology is really a translation of, of your functional processes. Thank you very much, uh, uh, member of the panel. Thank you very much for answering all the questions. We have got um, a, a lot more questions which we will answer via email. And uh, attendees, please keep sending your questions. We will attend to all of the questions via email. Um, I've got a last few slides to go through before closing the meeting. So, uh, members of the panel, if you could switch your camera um, off, please, and go on mute, that'd be great. And thank you very much for that. So, uh, um, uh, please uh, help us with the FPNA Power uh, Empowerment Survey 2021. Uh, you can find the link down there. Of course, your feedback is very helpful to create benchmark trends and strategies um, to be useful in future PA and um, presentation as well as uh, future PA and world. And also you will uh, receive a copy of this. Uh, the two upcoming FPNA events that we have for you uh, is the Digital London FPNA Circle. If you um, please uh, uh, join on April 22nd and the FPNA Trends webinar, which is a couple of days before that, uh, is talking about uh, embracing FPNA transformation, the key steps to, to consider. Um, and uh, finally, thank you to our sponsors for today. Uh, Jedox, thank you very much. FPNA Trends, thank you very much. I think a, a, a big thank you to our esteemed member of the panel for uh, the insightful presentation. Um, and thank you most of all to our attendees for uh, spending the time with us. Hopefully it's been a, a learning journey and insightful to you as well. Um, please stay connected. Um, this will uh, almost now conclude our uh, webinar for today. Uh, remember to give us your feedback. I hope you've joined, uh, enjoyed it and join us for the next one. Thank you very much, everyone. This concludes our um, webinar for today and see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.